Hello, everybody, and welcome to this next video in the Bukowski Book Club, where we are going to be going over dangling in the... What is this now? Let, let's talk about this. Dangling in the Tornafortia. Okay? So, I told you that I was going to figure out how to pronounce this word before we start this whole thing. And by the time we come here, I will know how to say that word. And I figured it out. A lot of you already know it, and you're like screaming at me. Okay, so I wrote it down, and probably can't even see what I did. It's actually pronounced turn forsha turn forsha turn forsha that is what the pronunciation video said and they said it three times just like that so this book is called dangling in the turn forsha okay just so you know too i will give you a little history lesson here because this is in the book it says the turn forsha is a large tropical tree ideally suited to the Southern California climate that produces small, delicate flowers and a kind of fleshy fruit. Okay? What I did was I went on the Google machine. Let me see if I could do this, if something comes up different. Oh, okay, so there is something different. So, what I have discovered here, if you type in tree after um, turn forsha, you get something called either turn fuchsia argenti. I think this is what they're talking about. Um, and then as far as what it actually is, it's a heliotropium arboreum. Okay, but I found this site real quick. So, uh, Turnforsha Argenti. This name is not universally accepted. A recent publication, blah, 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 has proposed the name Heliotropium Fornifoc, dude. Like, uh, for, thir, thir, whatever. So, um, Heliotropium. So, this tree that um, Bukowski named this book after doesn't even, isn't even called this anymore. Okay. Tornaforcia argenti is an evergreen shrub or tree with a spreading canopy that can grow from 1 to 12 meters tall. The plant has a wide range of uses, especially in the Pacific Islands, and at least in part due to, um, let me see... It is used for food, several valuable medicinal uses, providing shelter on coastal areas. It's a very attractive plant. Range, coastal areas of East Africa, across the Indian Ocean, through Asia to New Guinea, Northern Australia, and Polynesia. Um, and it is, um, it grows in sandy or limestone so i'm gonna try to save this photo if it will let me save that and i will put it up in here for you guys to look at okay the reason why this was so strange when i was looking it up is because if you just look up turnaforcia it's actually a plant it is a um it's commonly known as soldier bush it's a genus of flowering plants in the barrage family yeah so there's that and when you look at these pictures of it it does not look anything like what we are looking at here it's just a little tiny plant so that's strange but the uh heliotropium or boreum is i think what this is supposed to look like okay so that's fun am i right am i right let me see and so this book came out in 1981 Okay, what we're going to do is, um, I believe we did all of um, stuff up until this point, but just to give you another clue as to 
what was happening in the time before this. Yeah, okay, so not a whole lot changed. And as you know, Play the Piano Drunk is kind of a short book. So in 1980, um, he was living at his San Pedro house now. And he was doing that before, right? Uh, yeah, he was there in 1979 or 8 is when he moved in. Okay, so in 1981, the year this comes out, the Italian film production of Tales of Ordinary Madness starring Ben Gazzara is released. Now, if any of you have seen that, please let me know what you think about it and um, how close to the original material it is. I'd be interested to know that. And then he had a center section in the Wormwood Review called Goodbye to Hollywood. And then Dangling in the Turn Forsha was released on September 25th. So other things that happened this year. He has a temporary split with Linda Lee right now in February in 1981. And then in March... He wrote a letter to um, Carl Weisner, who was his um, German translator, and says, Linda and I are kaput. It's final. Um, his phone number back then was 213-832-3170, if you want to give that a call. Let's see. What else happened in 1981? The first space shuttle flight to Columbia lands successfully at Edwards Air Force Base on April 14th. Los Angeles doctor Michael Gottlieb reports on cases of five homosexual men who had contracted a form of pneumonia normally found only in those with severely weakened immune systems, largely ignored at the time, his report in a Centers for Disease Control publication turned out to be the first official notice of what came to be recognized as AIDS. That was on June 5th of 1981. I wonder if that's when it was called GERDS. I think that's what it was. Was it GRIDS? I don't know, one of those things. And then on September 4th, 1981, Los Angeles celebrates its 200th anniversary. That's crazy. And that is where we're going to stop that because um, there's not a whole lot, because everything else that happens after that is after this book comes out, so that's not relevant. So let's move on to the actual book here. Okay. Sir, so, this book is kind of bigger than most. Um, 281 pages. And we got that classic photo of him wearing his Bukowski shirt. Uh, it's so funny. That, um, the... I was going to say his bio looks a little bit bigger, but I think it's just bigger print. Huh, interesting. So let's see where some of this stuff has been published. Let's see, there's the Inside the Black Sparrow Press Santa Rosa edition. Okay, so this again was um, dangling in the Turn Forsha, copyright 1981. Um, Grateful acknowledgement is given to the following magazines where some of these poems originally appeared. Alcatraz, American Poetry Review, Bakke, Barney, The Berkeley Poetry Review, Cedar Rock, Fireweed, New York Quarterly, Poetry LA, Poetry Now, Scree, The Spirit That Moves Us, Tendril, Winners, and Wormwood Review. So I'm really curious, actually, if the Goodbye to Hollywood poems are in this book. Okay, so this is a different version of that poem. And then he changed it the next day. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we should look at this for sure. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll look at that. A lot of these are not really released anywhere else. Oh my god, I think, I think we have it. Yep, we have it. Okay, so these are the poems in Goodbye to Hollywood. So if you want to write these down, here you go. All Together Now, Hollywood Ranch Market, Edith Sent Us, Night School, 
the old pitch hitter, Scarlet, a friend, have a nice day, chill, the trashing of the dildo, a bad night for my buddy, action down on the corner, the German hotel. So those poems there are what became um, Goodbye to Hollywood. I'm assuming as we get farther into his career, there's going to be more manuscripts of these poems, which is kind of interesting. There are quite a few manuscripts in here with a lot of changes. So maybe I'll keep those for as we're reading this. So the other thing is, this book is the first book of his that isn't broken up into sections. So let's look through this. So let's just do it like that. So if you look in the table of contents, okay, the first page of it goes the lady in red to laugh on page 105. Let's just do that for the first week. The following week, we'll do bad fix on 106 to um, Sibelius, Sibelius, I never know how to say that. Um, 106 to 203 and then the final week we'll do the woman from Germany to night work so 204 to 281 that sounds solid and then we will be dangling in the turn forcia god I really fuck that up each time dude dangling in the turn forcia by Charles Bukowski that is the book we are doing in the Bukowski book club right now and we'll be doing for the next three weeks okay so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I think this is one of those books that the title damaged the success of the book. Guaranteed. Just like if he would have called Factotum the 10-year drunk, I think that would have been his highest selling book. But because he was being clever and being witty and called it Factotum, because even when he talks about it, or talked about it. He said it's an old-timey reference to a resume or someone who worked a lot of jobs, okay? So even when that book came out, that wasn't a recognized term, you know, by a lot of people. But um, Dangling in the Turn Forcia, it's poetic in the sense that it is literary and using vocabulary and shit like that but it's not something that rolls off the tongue so again i feel like if this book would have been called i don't know anything better whatever what do i know yeah if you want to be a part of this join the crew on any level of any tier level and you will get these um videos in your feed and notified okay so i will talk to you all later I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.